Hey, this is Joe Van Cleve and welcome to my little dark room. Uh, as you probably know if you've seen my older videos, I made a video a couple years ago about this pre-flashing light source. And if you don't know what pre-flashing is, this is a technique that we use with paper negatives or Harman direct positive paper in order to control the excess of contrast that can op often happen with these paper forms of media in high contrast daylight uh, type photography by increasing the shadow exposure without significantly changing the highlight exposure which ends up reducing the overall image contrast and giving you a better tonal range so the idea is you give a brief even exposure of light onto the paper before you load it into your camera or film holders well a question came up this week from one of my YouTube watchers about the pre-flashing light source and some of the details of how it was made. And I realized at this point that it would probably be better, instead of describing this old light that I built a few years ago, talk about how to build a new one that may be a little bit better. So that's what we're going to talk about, how to build a pre-flashing light source. Stay tuned. So like any other kind of photographic exposure, in order to get good repeatable results with pre-flashing, you're going to want to control the intensity of the light source and how long the light source exposes the paper. So let's sh talk about how I do that. So this is my old pre-flash light source and it's using a light bulb socket and a very small seven and a half watt light source. And in order to control the intensity of the light, I have the light source stopped down to a quarter inch diameter hole in a piece of black paper. Now this is some kind of a plumbing fitting that I just happen to have in my junk drawer here in the workshop. And the housing that I'm using is essentially a metal soup can or sauce can. And um, this light source was really cobbled together rather crudely and I really want to make a, a safer light source a little bit works a little bit better but for the intensity of the light I'm controlling that by the diameter of the aperture and secondarily by the distance between the light source and my work table where I put my paper and I typically have it around 29 30 inches the light is suspended above my work surface. So there's my light, my 30 inches above the work surface. That's where uh, the fixed distance that I use. So the distance from your, your work surface where you put your paper at down here to the light source and the size of the opening in the light will determine the intensity of the light. Now for the exposure time, the cord to my pre-flash light source is plugged into my gray lab darkroom timer but i would like to be able to make a little bit better of a light source that doesn't use a metal can as a housing so it's a little bit safer so i went to the hardware store today and i got a bag of goodies so first of all as far as the housing for the light what i'm going to be using is um i'm going to use a piece of pvc pipe with some end caps now it happens to be that I already had this made up from another project, which was, uh, if you guys know about a uh, black and white photographic developing system called BTZS or Beyond the Zone System, they recommended, uh, they actually was a company that was selling these kind of black canisters that you would pop off one end, you could roll up 4 by 5 sheet film inside of it and you could pour chemical in it, close it up, and then you could agitate these tubes in a water bath uh, to maintain constant temperature while the film was developing. Well I tried making my own BTZS tubes out of PVC pipe and the problem I had was the uh, back side of the film gets scratched by the uh, plastic uh, inside the uh, tube so I ended up not using it but these have been hanging around my workshop my darkroom for a couple of years and I realized that the light bulb that I'm using which is known as an S11 night light bulb okay so it's a night light bulb 
it says type S11. You can't probably can't see that. And it fits into a standard light bulb socket, a medium-sized light bulb socket, but it's only seven and a half watts and it's frosted white. I realize that that bulb fits inside this inch and a half inside diameter PVC pipe pretty easily. And uh, what I got here was a uh, some, I got a, a ceramic or porcelain, I should say, porcelain uh, electrical socket. And I didn't want the kind with the switch because the switch sticks out the side and it makes it so it won't go inside the tube, but the porcelain socket will go in there. The light bulb fits on the, fits on the socket. Um, I'm going to need a way of attaching the back of the socket to the PVC pipe. And what I'm going to be using is these uh, threaded pipe nipples. Yes, these are called nipples. Don't laugh. That's what they're called. But they're threaded. They come in different lengths and you use these nuts to secure them. So I'm going to be drilling a hole in the back of this cap, running the pipe nipple through there, securing that with uh, the nuts, and then the electrical cord will go run through that nipple onto the light socket itself, which would be on the front here. Speaking of electrical cords, you could buy or take an old extension cord from around the house, cut one end off and uh, use it, but they sell these wires that are already, uh, the loose end of the wire is already stripped and tinned, solder tinned. And so it's perfect. It'll wire right up into one of these sockets just fine. So that's what I'm going to do. We're going to make one of these little uh, pre-flash light sources. And then what we're going to use, the open end here, the end that comes off, because I had glued the other end on when I made the little developing tanks. But this end here that comes off, I'm going to drill a hole in it, put the paper disc in it, and that'll be the aperture hole for the light source. So this tube will end up hanging down off the enlarger instead of the metal can type light source. So we're going to have a, a plastic body for our light source. It's going to be a lot more safe, hopefully, than using a bad idea of a metal can, right? Um, and I'm going to suspend it from my... Uh, my enlarger the way I did before just by wrapping the cord around the top frame of the enlarger and tie wrapping it. You guys, you'll have to figure out how best to secure your light source. You might want to have a chain, a bracket of some kind screwed in here onto a wall of the wall, however you want to do it. Um, but mine is just going to be hung from my enlarger so it makes it real easy to take off if I need to uh, move it and stuff. So I'm going to get busy and uh, put together this light. So the first thing I want to do is I want to be able to drill uh, holes in the the top of the tube, body tube, for this uh, threaded pipe nipple to go through. And then I'm going to drill a hole in the bottom for the aperture of the light. And I'd like to have the hole centered, and so you might want to ask yourself, how do, I, uh, how do I ensure I can get a nice centered hole on one of these pipe caps, keeping in mind that they're kind of curved slightly? Well, one of the ways you can make a, a, find the center of a circle is to use a 90 degree angle. And it's conveniently enough that you can use one of these packages that my little parts came in. They're pretty close to being 90 degrees the way they're made. But basically what you're gonna do is uh, there is a little molded rim along the edge of the pipe cap. And if you put the corner of the 90 degree angle right at that molded mark and you make a line, make a mark with your Sharpie marker right where the edge crosses the molding on both sides. Of course I moved it, but we'll just pretend, make it like that. So I have two marks here, right? And now use the straight edge of the cardboard. Packaging is a, is a straight edge. You have a line that passes through the center of the circle, and then if you go ahead and do it again at 90 degrees, put the corner right at the molding mark, mark the two spots where the right triangle, right angle crosses the molding here and here, and then again draw your straight line connecting them. Where these two lines cross in the middle, that'll be very close to the center of the circle. And that's how you can uh, make yourself a guide for drilling the holes that are pretty close to being centered, close enough for our purposes. Okay, so I've drilled a 3 8 inch hole 
on both ends of the pipe caps. And I used a pilot hole, a small like a 16th inch drill bit to make a pilot hole and I used a Forstner bit that uh, drills a nice center. Just keep in mind if you do this, plastic is soft and when the bit starts to heat up it'll start melting the plastic so you kind of have to let the bit cool down uh, otherwise you'll have a big melted globby uh, thing going on there. But uh, anyways, so it's a little snug and you're basically going to be tapping threads as you're threading this pipe nipple through the cap. So we have all of our parts here that I need to do use to make this uh, work. Um, so starting with the top of the housing here, the cord needs to come through the top of the housing the top of the pipe nipple is going to be sticking out a little bit and there's going to be a nut on the top end to secure it. So I'm going to start by putting my nut in on the wire itself and then I'm going to thread it through the housing because keep in mind that I had already made this up earlier and this cap is glued on to the body. Then I'm going to be threading my other nut and then I'll thread the wire through the pipe nipple standoff like that and we'll just uh, temporarily thread this on a certain amount. I need to find a way to uh, thread the pipe nipple through the hole in the uh, cap that I drilled because they're both 3 8 roughly so what I've done is, done is I've put two of the nuts and uh, jammed them up together here on the end and now I can use my uh, wrench and I can tighten the pipe nipple and use it, use the threads of the pipe nipple to tap a threaded hole, a th type to tap threads <laughs> through the hole I drilled in the cap like that. So now the pipe nipple will thread nice and easy on its own. So now that I have that, I can assemble all the electrical parts into the socket and everything, and then all I have to do is uh, thread it up when I'm done. And you may not be able to see it very easily, but there are threads now cut into that, the sidewalls of that hole on the pipe cap. So there are two recessed screws down in this uh, socket that I'm going to loosen, and that'll enable me to pull it out and thread my wire up into it. When you unscrew those two all the way, the bottom flange of this ceramic socket will come undone. And so I'm going to want to thread my wires through that socket in the right orientation. And now I'm going to temporarily let those two screws fall out. But now on the base of this ceramic socket, I have my two electrical connections for my wire. So now I'm going to wire up the, the cord onto the socket. Now keep in mind that I know I have an international audience and this is US electrical stuff. So it's going to be different here than from other countries. Um, so this socket, it has a, uh, a silver wire connection and a gold or bronze colored one. And what happens is if you look at the way it's wired, the silver nut or screw is the one that goes to the threaded portion of the electrical socket which needs to be neutral okay so if you look at the plug here you have a wide end and a narrow end the wide end is neutral so the in, on this particular cord the wide end which is neutral is ribbed so make sure you take the ribbed end of the wire and thread it on to the silver colored connection which is the outer connection the threaded part of the light bulb socket that way it's neutral okay uh, now that's pertaining specifically to this brand of wire and only of course in the US standard but uh, what I like to do is to wrap the threads around the screw head and there is a little retaining flange protrusion that sticks up there and I like to have it secured underneath that connection point right there. The, the beauty of having these 
wires pre-tinned is because the tips of the wires are tinned with solder you don't you won't have individual strands of copper uh, sticking out and uh, sh potentially shorting together creating an electrical hazard and a fire hazard but again because you're going to be tightening the nut the screws in a clockwise direction I always wrap the wire around the screw also in a clockwise direction so that as you tighten the screw it wraps the wires tighter around it so there is my connections my ribbed neutral is connected to the terminal that is the outer thread part of the socket which is the wide spade part of the plug and I have all my other parts now that are kind of daisy chained together and now I need to kind of assemble everything okay I finished securing the uh, socket back together the two screws are back in tight and the base plate of the socket is on tight and now my pipe nipple threads into this base of the socket and there's a little flange in here that has a um, a screw and I'm going to tighten that up so that it prevents the pipe nipple from rotating any further and this will enable us to now use the socket as kind of a handle to thread this onto the uh, the body of the of the housing itself and I'm leaving a little bit of space here maybe a lot of three-eighths of an inch or so uh, for this uh, on this nut so this part of the threads will protrude up through the back of the housing and I'll have enough threads to tighten up the other nut and I have enough now threaded through there that I can thread on my nut securing it and um, what I'm going to do is, so the base of the socket on the outer threaded part, there's two rivets that hold that threaded base to the back and I'm using a pair of needle nose pliers on those two rivets in order to hold the socket from turning and tighten up the threads on that pipe nipple. So now I have a socket with a cord securely attached to an insulated housing and now I'm going to put my light bulb now one trick for how to thread the light bulb into place because you can't really reach your fingers in there too easy is take the packaging the cardboard packaging that the light bulb came in or one of your other parts came in and you kind of wrap it up in a little crude tube and you can thread it in there and then you can pinch it and it'll enable you to thread the light bulb into the socket and there is our light source plugged in um, you may just for the purposes of electrical safety before you do plug this in it might be a better idea to uh, use an ohmmeter and ohm out the wires and make sure they're not shorted together make sure you have good continuity before you plug it in uh, but uh, so that's my legal disclaimer if you're uncomfortable with anything dealing with electrical wiring go to a electrical shop and have somebody wire this up for you but it's pretty straightforward so um, this cap is going to fit over it and I'm going to put my little cardboard uh, black paper disc I'm going to tape it to the inside of the cap with a quarter inch hole so I have to uh, say that this um, particular piece of PVC pipe that I had cut was really fitted as I said earlier for four by five sheet film in length and it's actually a little too long for uh, this size or the length of pipe nipple standoff that I bought because it recesses the light bulb far enough back into the body of the tube that once you put the cap on with the aperture plate in it the size of the image circle that it projects on your work surface is a little too small for my purposes I'd like it a little bit bigger and so that's all determined by how close the aperture plate is to the light bulb the closer it is to the light bulb the wider the image circle the further away the aperture is the narrow the in the the circle of lights okay I've gone ahead and I've cut off about an inch from the end of this PVC pipe but it was a little bit too long 
for this light bulb socket with the length of pipe nipple standoff that I have purchased. So I needed to take off about an inch of it. If you're cutting uh, the PVC pipe with a power saw like a miter saw, be very careful. Use eye protection. Those little particles of plastic will be very hazardous to your eyes if you get in your eyes, even worse than wood. Uh, so be careful with plastic when you're cutting it. So I cut off about an inch and now I've taped my uh, paper disc that has a quarter inch hole. I've taped it into the inside of the cap and now when I put my pipe cap on <clears throat> I have a light source where the circle of light that this thing projects is um, much uh, bigger than it would have been otherwise and it's plenty big for uh, 8 by 10 inch uh, size paper. In fact, I did a little brief test of it out in the darkroom and it looks like I might almost be able to pre-flash 11 by 14 inch paper. This circle is big enough, suspended from 30 inches above my, my darkroom work surface. So there it is. Um, again, it does not have a switch on the body of the light. I didn't want a switch on it because I'm using my gray lab timer. I wanted it to be nice and clean and simple. Uh, <clears throat> as I indicated earlier, if you're uncomfortable with working around electrical wiring about the safety of it, go to an electrician or electrical shop and see if they can wire the socket up for you. But uh, common sense, make sure those two uh, wire connections in the socket are nice and tight. Make sure they don't short together. Before you put the light bulb into the socket, you could take an ohm meter if you have a little meter and ohm out the wires. Make sure each conductor connects to the proper side of the socket. Make sure read across the line and make sure they're not shorted together and you should be safe. But again, if you're not comfortable with wiring, get somebody that is to do it for you. But it's pretty easy to do. If you can wire up a lamp, that's essentially what these are. These are lamp parts from the hardware store. So I'm happy about this light source. I think it's going to work good. I'm not really too concerned about it being more enclosed and not being able to dissipate the air and the heat because I only leave it on for, you know, 10 seconds at a time maybe at most when I'm doing pre-flashing photo paper. I don't expect to be using this for a lengthy duration of time. Okay, let's see how it looks out here. So there is the new light bulb or the light source. I have it tie wrapped around my the frame of my enlarger and the enlarger head is motorized. It goes up and down and I have it preset to a certain height so that this light source is 30 inches above my uh, work surface where I would lay my paper negatives after cutting them. And of course I have the uh, cord plugged into the Gray Lab timer. I hope you guys enjoyed this and got some value out of it. Again, a little bit safer of a light source for pre-flashing paper negatives using the Type S11 light bulb. Um, I hope you guys are encouraged to work with photo paper as an in-camera film. And until next time, I hope you stay creative and have a good day.